What is up guys? We are back with another video. And of course, today's video is about Intel's 10th generation core processors. Now these were announced about a month ago and we finally have them here and we've tested them out. So we're definitely gonna tell you all about performance. We're gonna tell you about overclocking. We're gonna tell you some of the new features that you might get with these processors as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So to start things off with packaging, we didn't receive the retail packaging of these chips. We have our reviewer kit right here, which I think most reviewers got. It's this nice blue box that says 10th gen core on it. And then it has our two processors inside and in these small boxes, one for the core i5 and one for the core i9. It does look very cool. Um, but if you wanna see what the retail packaging looks like, I'm sure you guys can just go ahead and Google it. Now, Intel has made some improvements with these processors, not just in terms of increasing frequencies, but we have some new features added and they've changed things around just a little bit. The first thing is that you're gonna get three different boosting algorithms. So first up is Turbo Boost 2.0. We all know what that is. That's been on Intel processors for a while now, and that's gonna be available across the entire range. So, you know, from Core i9 all the way down to Core i3, you'll have that feature. The second boosting algorithm is Turbo Boost Max 3.0, and it's gonna be available on Core i9 and Core i7 processors. This adds favored cores, so your OS will be aware of the two physically best cores which can sustain the highest boost frequencies better than the rest of the CPU, and the OS scheduler will prioritize running workloads on these cores. Finally, there is thermal velocity boost, and basically what that is, it's a higher boost frequency depending on your cooling. So if you have a good cooling solution, it's actually gonna boost even higher. There are some new overclocking features added. The first is that you're able to disable hyperthreading per core now. Previously, you had to do it globally where you just turn hyperthreading on or off. Now you can actually do it per core and you'll find this option in your motherboard's BIOS. You're also gonna get enhanced finer grain voltage frequency curve controls. So Intel is actually launching a major update to XTU. Um, which allows you to set the voltage at individual frequencies for much finer control. Intel has made a physical change to these processors as well, and they've done it to help with heat transfer. So they've actually made the die size thinner and they've increased the size of the integrated heatsink. One of the biggest changes to the 10th generation core series is that the Core i5 series now has hyper threading. So previously, if you had bought a Core i5 processor, it would be, you know, a six core, six thread processor. You didn't have hyper threading. Now, all of the Core i5 parts are all six core, 12 thread, which is pretty awesome. So coming down to the processors that we're taking a look at today, the Core i9 10900K, of course, is fully unlocked and it is a 10 core 20 thread processor with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, a Turbo Boost 2.0 of 5.1 gigahertz, Turbo Boost Max 3.0 of 5.2 gigahertz, and a Thermal Velocity Boost of 5.3 gigahertz. It has a TDP of 125 watts and 20 megabytes of Intel Smart Cache. The Core i5 10600K is of course unlocked as well. And this is a six core 12 thread processor with a base clock of 4.1 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz. It has a TDP of 125 watts and 12 megabytes of Intel smart cache. Now for testing, all of the hardware is pretty much identical in all of our test systems except for of course the motherboard, because again, we had to test Z390 for eighth and ninth generation. And of course we had to test X570 for Ryzen 2000 and 3000 series.
So to round things out, you know, Intel has improved performance across the board um, in terms, not only in terms of multi-core performance, but single core as well. Remember, these are 14 nanometer parts and they're directly competing against seven nanometer parts. And again, that is still pretty impressive that Intel can remain competitive in this space just on that fact alone. Now, the i5, as it falls, <laughs> the i5 10600K is what, what I would say was one of the most uh, surprising things about the 10th generation core series is that we do get hyper threading on core i5 parts. So instead of getting a six core, six thread part, you're getting a six core 12 thread part, which I think is really great. And of course, I know most of you are really interested in the Core i9-10900K. That is gonna compete directly with the Ryzen 9 3900X. And I think that it just comes down to what you're gonna be doing when it comes to performance. You know, if you are gaming, say you're building a PC now and you're gonna be gaming on it 80, 90% of the time and you care about frame rates, you care about getting the best frames in your games, the i9-10900K is the way to go. It's just gonna give you better performance in gaming. Intel processors are known for that, and that's what we saw with this processor. 
Now, if you're a content creator or you're doing something that has a lot of really you know, high-end multi-core workloads, the Ryzen 9 3900X is gonna perform better just because one, it has more cores. You're, it's a 12 core, 24 thread processor, um, of course, going against the, the 10 core, 20 thread processor and the Intel processor. So I think, again, if multi-core is your thing, you would be better off with a Ryzen processor. And if you're doing both, I think one of the biggest things that it comes down to is price. So the i9 10900K, will be uh, 529 when it launches, which is the same price as the 9900K was. Um, and right now, at least the last time that I checked, which was a couple hours ago, the Ryzen 9 3900X is 409. So a little bit over $100 difference. And you have to remember that that $100 can go a long way in a build. It can be the difference between getting regular memory and RGB memory. It can be the difference between getting a normal SSD and an NVMe SSD, you know, a certain graphics card, and then, you know, the step up, which would be like a hundred bucks. Um, again, a hundred dollars can go a long way. So that's definitely something to think about. And also the platform is something you have to think about when it comes to these processors as well. You know, Z490 isn't going to give you Gen 4 storage. And if you want the fastest storage available, that's what you're gonna need is you would need an X570 or B550. Um, so again, definitely things to think about, but I do think, and you have to commend Intel for being competitive, still being on 14 nanometer. I think that's the biggest thing. And of course, you know, you, they did add hyper threading to Core i5. That's something that of course Intel or AMD really made Intel do. Um, but I still think it is impressive that they are competitive when Again, they're on 14 nanometer compared to seven nanometer, which AMD is on. Now guys, if you have any questions about these processors, we will have links to our full written reviews on both of these, which have all of the benchmarks and everything like that. Um, I didn't cover overclocking in this video. We might make a follow up. They're both easy to overclock. It all comes down to cooling and temperatures and things like that, but we'll definitely get to that in a follow up video. But again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. And if you enjoyed our tech content, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.